Hello, everyone. You, too, can have a podcast. You have a passionate voice. You want to be heard. You can be inspiration to others. And it is super easy. You all know that I am not technical. So just download the Anchor app on your phone or go to anchor.fm and get started sharing your voice and inspiring the world. Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power, and hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear, shame, and anxiety, and never, ever good enough. Then God found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life. And I want this for everyone. So I left my executive career to help others find true acceptance, supernatural peace, joy, and love that only comes from a relationship with God. Here is my reality reflection for today. God is always challenging us to think, to ponder, to reflect all of the things so many of us don't take the time to do. So when you are reading the daily readings, And I pray that you are something, a word, a phrase, a theme should bounce out, grab you, slap you in the face. As I always say, sometimes it's subtle. Sometimes it's blatant. And today it was pretty blatant. And I really had to sit and think, Lord, what? Is it that you're really trying to say here? And we're going to read that right now. Matthew 9, 9 through 13. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the custom post. He said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. While he was at table in his house, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat with Jesus and his disciples. The Pharisees saw this and said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? He heard this and said, Those who are well do not need a physician, but the sick do. Go and learn the meaning of the words. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. So of course, in my, <laughs> in my simple mind, the phrase, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, which is italicized in the text, jumps out at me. It's a different font. He's trying to make a point. But even more importantly, right before it, he tells us, go and learn the meaning of the words, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. So I sat with this for a long time. And I had to reflect on my life as a kid as my life as, you know, a young adult. And when I screwed up or when I did something wrong, I didn't exactly run to my parents and tell them. <laughs> of fearing any kind of punishment, fearing humility, being grounded, that type of stuff. So I just walked away and had the guilt in my shoulders. I did not have a relationship with Jesus. I had no idea. Well, I shouldn't say I had no idea, but I wasn't practicing any kind of Catholic teachings, sacraments, nothing. So I'm in my mind, I know I did wrong, but I didn't have anyone to go to. And I wish I had Jesus in my life, in my heart. 
and it made me reflect to the first time I went to confession where I was truly afraid. I went in there thinking I was going to get yelled at and that I was going to get one of the worst punishments ever. And the priest who I didn't even know was in there in persona Christi, meaning he's Jesus in that confessional. But the minute that he said, welcome home was the moment that I knew God was mercy. God was so loving. God is so happy that I am here. All of my fear and my worry and my shame was washed away, literally, like a waterfall came over me. And the minute that warm water hit me, everything washed away. And I remember last Friday, which was the Sacred Heart of Jesus, the the feast of that day. And I was looking forward to going to confession. Unfortunately, my priest wasn't offering it that day. So I went the following day, which is the Immaculate Heart of Mary. But as I was sitting in mass that day, on that Friday, a week ago today, it hit me because of the homily and because of what the priest said, how Jesus is so merciful that Jesus truly, truly wants us to come to him. He is our doctor. We are sick sinners And we need him as our physician. We don't need to earn that love. We have rituals in the church. There's no question. We have the mass, the beautiful holy sacrifice of the mass. We have ways in which we go to confession and how we must repent by doing our penance. We have all these beautiful teachings in the church. But the one thing that God really wants us to realize is that he came here to draw people to him in mercy, with his love, his forgiveness. And many of us look at it more like we have to earn his love And now we got to go receive our punishment when we go to reconciliation. It's that little difference between going to see Jesus repentant in our heart and hoping that we're going to be forgiven, feeling bad about ourselves, feeling full of shame, just like I was as a little kid. I don't want to tell my parents. I don't want to get in trouble. But we do it anyway because that's what the church tells us versus how I was last Friday. Because I was mad at myself. I was ticked off that I'm still taking this thing into confession. I got to get a hold of this, right? And it's not me. I need Jesus because the closer I am with him, the more mercy he's he's going to show me. I don't need to quote unquote do things to have him be merciful toward me and to love me. He's already proven he's loved me since the very, very beginning. Since he came down and Mary said yes, salvation, history, and humankind will never be the same. So I'd like all of us to sit down and spend some time with God, thanking him. Thank you so much. Thank you for giving me faith. Thank you for helping me understand that you are a merciful father. And I need to look at reconciliation as a positive, beautiful sacrament. That the more I attend reconciliation with a humble heart, with 
a heart that desires to be changed through your grace, Jesus. The more that I look at reconciliation, cilia, little hairs, eyelashes, I want to be eyelash to eyelash with you, God. Back in your good graces so that you can continue to heal me because you did not come for the righteous. You came for all of us who are so broken, who are trying to be good Christians, who always fall. But if we know your merciful heart is waiting, your sacred heart is welcoming us, we can run to you instead of trying to show off for you or accept trying to add one more thing on my list, one more prayer, one more devotion. He wants our heart, not our tasks. Yes, sacrificing. And in this case, he was more or less talking about the blood sacrifices of the animals back then, but honestly, it comes to us today. We should be sacrificing so we can master our bodies so that we can show ourselves that our bodies don't rule us. We're trying to master the the body, the mind, the soul, the spirit, and Satan and the world and the flesh. And it's not easy, but it is when you look at Jesus's love and how he's just waiting for us to come to him, reach out to him, ask for his forgiveness and the beautiful sacrament of reconciliation and walk in this partnership of love. We've talked about this prayer for three days before this and it all (laughs) comes to the heart. It all comes from mercy. And the more that we remember Jesus' love and mercy, the more we can remember that we need to be that way with ourselves and those in our lives so that we actually forgive ourselves. I do have this one priest. He's new at this parish. And when I get him, he's a very, very kind man. Kind And he says things like, that's a beautiful confession. And God knows your heart. You sound repentant. I don't know if he says this to everyone. And Jesus wants you to forgive yourself. And that was what I learned the meaning of this was. He desires mercy, not sacrifice. So let's seek him out as the loving God that he is, the one who helps us through everything, the one who calls us in prayer, in life, to be kind and gentle, patient and loving. And let's thank him today on this first Friday. (laughs) If you haven't done a first Friday, it's another one today. July 1st, look up First Friday Devotions, Sacred Heart of Jesus. Also, First Saturday Devotions, which is tomorrow. You can start that if you haven't. Look that up. That's for Mary's Immaculate Heart. And read the promises. They're beautiful. Next time I'll try it. But I'm trying to keep this back to 10 minutes because I know you guys have lives and I know the last few with prayer went long. But it's all tied together, everyone. It's all tied to the heart. And if our heart doesn't change, we don't change. And the heart can only be turned from that rock into a heart of flesh through Jesus. So let's pray for our hearts to be 
tender flesh Jesus hearts and immaculate Mary hearts. I'll tell you that that is what I pray when I receive the Lord in Holy Communion at Mass. It comes from my St. Louis de Montfort consecration that I ask Mary to rip my heart out, my selfish, dirty, disgusting, sinful heart, and I ask her to put hers there. And then when I receive Jesus, I ask them both to be formed in my heart, to replace mine with theirs. Because that's where our thoughts, our words, our deeds, our prayer, our treatment of ourselves and our love for others, it all comes from our inner heart where Jesus lives. And his spirit is with us always. So let's live in the spirit. Let's go be love. For all of you who are having parties this weekend in this country, America, America, <laughs> for those George W. Bush make funners of people, America. Anyway, we are having the 4th of July, which is celebrating our independence, and there will be a lot of parties. So I'm just asking people to be very safe, especially with fireworks. But be very grateful and outward. Be visible with it. Get some American flags. Post on social media thanking all of the people who have fought for the freedom in this country. And love one another. (laughs) You're going to see people that might push your buttons. God desires mercy, not sacrifice. So he wants you to be that way as well. Okay. I love you all. I will talk to you on Monday. Have a blessed and inspired day and go find more with God, please. (laughs) All right. Talk to you soon.